Well, let me tell you something, brother! Snort, 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 tell you. Drip, snort, snort. I got the drip, yo. Does anyone really care? And it's sad because I do think like years and years ago, back in the day, I was well more well known for fighting games, correct? I kind of gave that up. Around the era when Street Fighter V came out, I gave it up. I said, Street Fighter V sucks so bad. I didn't want to keep playing it. And without Street Fighter V being in the mix as the major fighting game that I was playing, instead, I was going to do more variety of other games, which I did. If you take a look at the last, you know, 10 years or so, I adopted a ton more style of games that normally I wasn't even playing. I mean, games like the Persona series, the Yakuza series, and things that became staples of my content that I hadn't been previously. They kind of moved in and took over for my fighting game coverage. Was that really a decision that you made though, DSP, or was that a position that you got pushed into because you didn't have another option? Because the reality of the situation is that you weren't gonna be good enough at Street Fighter V anyway. You were not gonna be good enough to maintain your relevancy in the community. You were not gonna be good enough to continue to entertain people day after day, week after week when it came to that game specifically. I mean, you really don't do that now regardless of what game you're playing, so I guess it never really mattered. But you act as though you were making a choice. You act as though you had any other option. Your only other option was really to just quit making content altogether if you didn't pivot to doing something else because Street Fighter V was not going to make you the money. It wasn't going to keep you in the uh, snort fort that you have there. So you can sit there and act like you planned this all along, like this was a decision that you made, but me and you both know that Street Fighter V was never really an option for you. Now I'm not to say that I didn't cover fighting games. I did. When a new fighting game came out, I would play it. If it had a story mode, I would play it. Any offline modes, I would play them. I would learn a few characters, go online. And then essentially, I would drop the game within a couple of weeks of it releasing. And this pretty much went for every fighting game, whether it was a Mortal Kombat or an Injustice or a Tekken or another kind of a spin-off fighter. Whatever fighters I played, that was, that was it for me, right? Like, I didn't really care as much about them. Yes, you treated those fighting games like you pretty much treat every other video game since you've been a full-time content creator. You put them on the conveyor belt, you run through them pretty much as quickly as possible with few exceptions, and then you just get them off and move on to the next thing because you're actively chasing those day one views at all times. And I'm kind of confused as to who you're explaining this to because all of your dents have either been here for a while or just here to LARP. So exactly who is this recap for? I'm confused because everybody who's here already knows how you play games. Everybody's already familiar with how you did every other fighting game up until recently with Street Fighter 6. Thanks for the random back in time segment though, it was very robust. Now, when Street Fighter 6 came out, that's when things changed. Because with Street Fighter 6, it looked so good. And I was like, man, they really, it really feels like this is an invigoration or reinvigoration of the fighting game community for me because they put so much effort into the game. It plays how you would want a competitive fighter to play. It has the best online netcode of any fighter I've ever seen. It has a ton of features, both online and offline, which is great. So all this stuff to me is saying, this is the time to get back in the fighting game. So I did, last year I committed myself to Street Fighter VI the entire summer and early into the fall. It actually wasn't even until like, what, October when I laid up and stopped playing it regularly because there were so many other releases out. And I did well. You know, you know, as much as morons on the internet would like to pretend, because they always pretend and try to say anything that I do of any kind of achievement doesn't exist, I got good at Street Fighter VI. And this is where the lies begin, because DSP really didn't get all that good at Street Fighter VI. Yeah, he's probably better than the average player, the average player being someone who plays very casually, like after their full-time job, you know? But he never really got good. He was still getting absolutely smacked by other players online pretty much non-stop. And towards the end, it became a hobby for detractors and trolls alike to go online and absolutely smack him and post it up the next day and gloat about it. And I don't think that these detractors and trolls are high-level players exactly. I don't think that they're going to turn tournaments and winning or anything. I think they just play the game, you know, like they want to play the game and they wound up beating Phil. And regardless of what his skill level actually is, I think convincing somebody that DSP was good at Street Fighter 6 is a hard sell just based off of his gameplay because every single session was filled with nothing but salt regardless of whether or not he was winning, which I might add wasn't honestly all that often from what I saw. Once he crossed the threshold into master rank with any character, you know, where the real competition actually began, he seemed to be getting stomped pretty consistently. 
consistently. I took multiple characters to the master level with winning records. Unlike other people who were picking Ken and grinding it out and, and only winning a third or a fourth of the time but still got to master, every character I played with in Street Fighter VI had a big winning record where I won way more than I ever lost and I got them to master relatively quickly. I love that he says a big winning record, like it wasn't a 50 to 60% win rate. And he talks about all of these other people getting to master rank with Ken and just grinding it out with a losing win loss ratio. But if that were the case, you'd think that he'd have done so much better in master rank than he really did. You'd have thought that he had won more matches in master rank than he did, but that just wasn't the case. So he can sit here and act like he's better than all of these other players. He can sit here and act like because his win loss ratio is technically positive that he's some masterful player but i just don't think that that's the reality i think the reality is is he's a fourth rate duelist with a third rate deck so that was a big accomplishment for me to get back into a competitive level i would like to think that if i took those characters to a tournament i would at least do decent i certainly wouldn't win any tournaments but i think that i probably would have beaten a few opponents at a tournament and stuff and that's way better than i would say i ever would have done previous in the last 10 to 15 years because i just didn't give a crap you know, I really felt like I had fallen out of love with fighting games because Street Fighter V was so shitty. Yeah, I gotta press X to doubt that he's gonna beat anybody at any sort of legitimate tourney. Maybe if he's talking about those weird mall tournaments that he was doing back in the day, you know, to get that Tekken 3 trophy. But any legitimate style tournament, I don't think he really stands a chance. I think he's just overestimating how good he actually is at some of these characters in Street Fighter 6. But if he's this confident that that would be the case, I don't know why he didn't go out of his way to do a couple of tournaments. People were asking him to go to locals in his area just to play and record and put it up online so they could see see what the experience was like. But obviously he refused because he's incapable of leaving his house. He's so confident that he would beat people in tournaments but then refuse to go to them. If you ask me, that's kind of like saying that you would absolutely kill running with the bulls in Spain, you know? You would just dust the bulls and never have a problem. And then when people ask you to go do it, show them what it's like, show them what you're capable of, you go, no, that's stupid, dude. Why would I do that? Are you a moron? Then why would you even bring it up? Why don't you just stay in your lane and shut your mouth? Now. In regards to Tekken 8, the other way I can approach it outside of getting good like I did in Street Fighter 6 is to just casually play it. And the truth be told, if you go back in time and you look at my original fighting game coverage that I did on my original Dark Side Phil channel, and even the coverage that I did on the DSP Street Fighter channel for about a year, it was more casualized coverage. And what I mean by that is, I absolutely did not focus in on only a couple characters and get good and try to play at a high level. I, that never happened. I was known as the casual guy who got popular on YouTube for fighting games and the FGC resented me for that. Huge. That's why when back in the day, if you look at interviews from like 2009, 2010, and they'll ask guys like, you know, Mike Ross or something at a tournament, <clears throat> so what do you think of DSP? And he'd be like, DSP, I don't know who the fuck that is, and blah, blah, blah. Of course they all knew who I was. They constantly talked about me on their commentary at tournaments. They dropped my name everywhere, always in a negative light. Why? Because I didn't want to be part of their community. And this is just straight up bullshit. There's no doubt about it. He wanted desperately to be in the fighting game community. He wanted to be included so bad on the forums, at these tournaments, in these brackets. He wanted to be part of the gang so bad. It was honestly embarrassing. I get secondhand embarrassment when I'm looking at those old forum posts on the Dent Sea Scrolls. Right now, you're looking at a 41-year-old man who was retconning history from about 20 years ago. I can't believe this guy is able to sit here and lie to you with a straight face like that. This man was maxing out 13 credit cards i believe to play street fighter competitively at one point he was buying the big hotel rooms with extra space because he was hoping that people would come back from the events and play video games with him into the night he wanted to be friends with these people he wanted to be somebody in the community and nobody liked him he was obnoxious arrogant and full of himself and nobody liked being around him and if you want receipts for any of this i just recommend that you go watch the dent sea scrolls over on wpig there will be a link in the description and a pop-up right about now. All of the receipts are there. It's years of history documented and available for people to still see. ALT and Steve did a great job of laying it all out and talking about it. But to get back on track, this is bullshit. Everything that DSP just said about not wanting to be in this community and people hating him because he was on YouTube is absolutely fabrication. They hated him because he sucked. They hated him because he's not a good person. He was a blight on the community that they were happy was gone. 
I'd been there, done that. I had no desire to be a competitive fighting game player, but I was very prominent on the internet for making fighting game content, despite the fact I wasn't good. They hated that shit. Here they were grinding away, trying to get popular on the internet for high level gameplay, but I was way more prominent than they were, and, and you know, at that point, one of the top gamers on YouTube, and they really resented it. <clears throat> but again, that was because I was a casual guy. I was more imp uh, I was more focused on let's do over the top commentary on silly gameplay and have a good time with it rather than oh let's play high level and teach people how to play the game. That was never my intention. If that was never your intention, DSP, then why did you think that you were the person to release tutorials on YouTube? Why did you take that upon yourself to do? And I know I asked that in the last video, but I can't get it out of my mind because he keeps saying this. I wasn't going to play high level. I didn't want to go out of my way to teach other people how to play. That wasn't what I was trying to do. I was just trying to do the funny commentary, dude. But yet you were releasing tutorials and you released quite a few of them. They were bad, not very informative, definitely left a lot to desire but you release them nonetheless so why did you take it upon yourself to do that you know i was doing entire sets of deon madness the worst character or one of the worst characters in street fighter 4 and i was beating people with dan and laughing at them and how bad they sucked because they lost to dan online that's the kind of content i used to put out and that was what was prominent all right but that was like 13 14 years ago all right, like that was a long time ago. And that kind of content today is actually looked down upon by anyone in the fighting games. Meaning if you make content in a fighting game and you have commentary where you're like berating the other person or insulting the other person or saying ridiculous things, oh, that's not allowed anymore. So the concept of the video is not the thing that the people are taking issue with. If you want to do a bunch of sets as the worst character in the game and absolutely dunk on people because you're just that good, that's totally fine. People are going to be interested in that style of content. DSP just addressed what people actually took issue with when it came to his videos back then, and it was the commentary. He was going out of his way to be as toxic as possible. He was absolutely smashed off his ass talking shit to everybody he played against, acting like he was better than them. And he still does that to this day. But I can't believe how much he actually wants to harp on this he wants to continuously bring up that he can't be toxic online anymore and people don't want to listen to it or put up with it when it comes to content that they watch yeah sorry dsp it comes off a little disrespectful annoying and makes you look like a whiny bitch the entire time the shtick is funny for all of about 30 seconds until you realize that these are his true feelings and thoughts and then you just kind of get irritated that this person exists right that's too taboo too harsh you're supposed to be ultra respectful now in the fgc you're supposed to praise your opponents constantly, never say a negative thing about the game, only be positive, and it's like, wait, what? Like, when I grew up in arcades, no lie, it was this actual, like, hazing atmosphere. As if you were in college and people were hazing you or, like, in a locker room at a high school. That's really what it was like in the fighting game community in its early inceptive days before the days of Street Fighter IV, eSports, sponsorships, and everyone making bank playing fighting games. DSP is the guy who's constantly talking about the good old boys club and how much he hates it and thinks that it shouldn't exist when it comes to every industry that he thinks that has one, including the fighting game community, might I add. But hazing is one of the activities that typically comes with these good old boys clubs. But he loves to look back, reminisce, and think fondly of these old pastimes of his. And of course, he always has to take it to the extreme. Yes, DSP, you're never allowed to talk bad about the game or another player. You can't say one negative thing, when the reality is you just can't be that toxic. You can have your complaints about the game, but you can't only complain about the game for pretty much the entire session. You can't literally tell the devs to go do things in Minecraft. And when I say that he can't, I don't mean that he isn't physically able to. I mean, that's not going to draw an audience and that's going to actually drive people away. That's why he can't. So I grew up in a whole different generation that shit talk was common. No one would watch someone play a game and shit talk each other in a fighting game and then be offended at all. It never happened. Everyone was used to the shit talk. You had to be in line with it. You know what I'm saying? Now, I go ahead and I play a fighting game and God forbid that I make a joke or I say that someone sucks and is a button masher. It's like, oh, that was so insanely disrespectful. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, I didn't, I don't even know who the person is who I'm playing, right? I have no knowledge of who the people are on the other side of the internet playing these games. I'm not making insanely hurtful personal insults about them and their character and their real life shit 
I'm just saying their gameplay sucks. But that's the exact reason why you shouldn't be saying these things about them, DSP. That's why it is that much more disrespectful now, because you don't know these people. Talking shit to your friends when you play video games with them IRL or you do any activity in real life with your friends, the friends that you don't have, is totally fine and I understand that. But playing online is a totally different atmosphere and going out of your way to be disrespectful is just toxic. If you want to go out of your way to be toxic, feel free, be my guest, but you have to be willing to deal with the consequences that come from that. I enjoy playing FPSs and sometimes it's fun to get in the voice chat and be toxic in an FPS. I understand. But that's not everybody's cup of tea and when you're trying to be an online content creator and produce content that your audience specifically wants to see, I don't think that being toxic is it. I don't think that that's the audience that you have anymore. That's not the audience that you've cultivated, at least not on purpose. Because you forced everybody who likes to see you get riled up and salty and rage filled to a different channel. You you force them to become detractors and watch that content elsewhere. Right? That's, there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Everyone's always gonna say, if you lose to someone and you got sour grapes about it, you're gonna say they're a scrub, right? That's, it's just it's a common thing. And the fact that in the FGC, this has become such a prominent thing now, oh God, you can't fucking make fun of others and stuff. It's like, what are you talking about, right? And of course, for me, I'm always under the microscope. God forbid that, that anyone else does it, it's fine. But if Darkside Phil does it, he shows up on the Scrub Quotes Twitter account and all my detractors fucking re redo it and get content out of it and stuff. It's like so stupid, right? It's so dumb. That's not the nature of how it used to be in that community. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> To me, this just kind of sounds like the MMA community. Just hold on, bear with me for a second. I'll explain. ESP is upset because there isn't this major toxic, disrespectful smack talk going on all of the time, a la WWE. It sounds like these people in the FGC are kind of like people in the MMA community. And no, I'm not talking about the fans and the watchers. I'm talking about the people that are actually involved in doing it. Because while there might be a little bit of smack talk and rivalry going on in the public to draw some eyes to get some views, most of the time behind the the scenes it is pretty respectful because they understand that there's a craft and a discipline that comes into mixed martial arts so while yes at the end of the day it's two adults fighting and you would think that that would inherently be toxic and disrespectful it doesn't necessarily have to be and these people seem to be wanting to hold themselves to a higher standard to give each other a little more respect because they understand the community in which they participate actually takes some sort of skill to be in obviously there's real beef and toxicity but that's few and far between I guess the long and short of it is it just comes down to sportsmanship and the FGC and a lot of esports style communities are pushing themselves to be more sportsmanlike, to hold themselves to a higher standard with dignity and respect to each other. If that sounds soft to you, that's fine, but you have to come to the understanding that if that's the kind of community that you want around you, if those are the people that you're trying to appeal to, that's just not going to happen if you behave the way that DSP wants to. So, the thing that is about this, if I continue to play Tekken 8 casually, instead of I don't care about getting good at the game or whatever, and I play a new character every week, that's all well and good, but is that really enough? Is that enough to keep me interested? Is that enough to keep you guys interested? Because eventually we're going to get bored of just playing it at a casual level and just messing around with new characters, and essentially that's exactly what happens every time that I play a fighting game, I'll play it for like a month or two, and then I get bored and I just don't play it anymore, right? And that's fine, DSP, because I don't think that you should really be forcing yourself to play games that you don't want to play. Because that just makes for bad content, and I would hate to see what your content looks like if it gets any worse. I'm fairly certain that it's normal practice for other streamers to just quit playing a game if it's not something that interests them, because they understand that if they're not having fun, that they're not going to be entertaining for their audience, and that's the main goal of a stream. That's the same reason that a lot of streamers don't adhere to such a strict schedule like you. They don't hold themselves to completing games that they they don't actually want to complete. That's why they play games sporadically when they feel like it. They come in and just say, hey, I'm going to be playing this today and tomorrow, and that's what I want to do, so if you want to show up, show out, you know? But not DSP. He's got to plan everything like two weeks in advance and tell you every single day the updated schedule anyway. He's the only person that's making this job miserable for him. He's his own boss, and he's holding himself to a standard that he doesn't even like. Like, for example, with Tekken 7, I think I played four or five characters and Lily was my best character. And I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm now at the point. The only way I'm going to improve is to study this game, to actually put time and effort into learning the meta. How do I parry? 
How do I learn the absolute perfect timing to keep hitting people to do giant combos and the like to mix them up? How do I get around? I need to know all the matchup knowledge for all these characters. And I even said it to the audience. I said, I feel like I've now hit the wall where I need to now treat this more seriously to get better. But at that point, and you know, this was many years ago when Tekken 7 had just come out, people were like, nah, that's enough. I was like, okay. And that's when we moved on. And I, I literally never played Tekken 7 again because uh, people said that they wanted other stuff. Now, we're a different point now. You know, we're years, years later, and I actually got really good at Street Fighter 6. And for an extended period of seven plus months, I feel like the content got better and better. My gameplay got better and better, right? And the only reason, really, that I dropped Street Fighter 6 is because the game's stagnant now. Like, really, the, it, it's hit a level where there's nothing changing in it. It plays the same. Everyone's playing the same online. It's just an endless grind. The only way I would get better at the game is to play it five, six hours a day like the pros do, and I'm not going to do that. See, and I just hate when he makes broad statements like that. He says that he wouldn't get any better unless he played for five or six hours a day like the pros do. And that's just not the case. He could be making small improvements gradually over time by just playing consistently a couple times a week. It just sounds like he's making excuses as to why he can't get any better. Yeah, guys, I would totally start working on my physical fitness, but the only way that I'm going to get yoked is if I spend every single day in the gym like American style football players do. So why would I even bother? You're just cutting yourself short. You're not looking for little gains. You're not looking to actually make gradual improvements. You're comparing yourself to the best of the best and then being like, well, I can't be like them. So why bother? So it makes sense to move on to another game, which is what we're doing with Tekken. But the way I see it is like, I'm kind of damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. If I drop the game entirely, people will be upset and be like, dude, you played it for two weeks. Why are you dropping it so early? If I play it and try to get better at it and try to reach a higher level of gameplay in it, which I very well could do, then I have to focus on three or four characters and people are undoubtedly going to say, well, you always use the same characters. This is boring. If I try to learn every character on a casual level, I'm never going to get good at the game and undoubtedly people are going to say, man, every time you play, you're only fighting scrubs and you're not really getting any better and this is boring right the way that i can make it spicy is to have the kind of commentary that I, i'm known for but people find it inflammatory people find it insulting people find it unbecouth of someone trying to make content on the internet to talk shit now so it's kind of like so what do you do well dsp you could try being entertaining without being toxic you could try just being an interesting person you could try being a funny person who has an actual sense of humor you could try setting goals that people might actually be interested kind of like you did in street fighter 6 you wanted to get these characters to master rank right why don't you set a goal that you want to get x amount of characters to whatever rank or you want to get a few of these characters to whatever rank give these people something to be invested in give them something that they can look at to see that you're actually making progress on a goal and that goal doesn't have to be rank specific it could be you in a certain win loss ratio you want to have enough credits to customize all of these characters it, like it could be anything you just have to make it engaging and fun for your audience but of course that would require some sort of thought some sort of planning some sort of understanding of your audience and you're not interested in that so immediately you would just rather be toxic online because you think that that's funny you think that that's going to bring the audience to me it just shows how lazy you are that that's the first thing that you think of that that's the only thing that you want to do to make your streams more entertaining when it comes to fighting games right it's like no matter what content i do everyone has an excuse for why it's no good the high level stuff is too boring and samey and grindy the casual play you never get good and it gets repetitive and boring because you're only playing scrubs oh well if you talk shit during your commentary that's entertaining but also insulting and you're a horrible human so it's like all right so so what am I supposed to make then? You know what I mean? Like, it's funny because I've read the feedback. In the last 24 hours, a bunch of people left comments about this on my videos or reached out to me otherwise. And everyone's feedback is different. Yes, DSP, your audience is not a hive mind. They're actually all individual style individuals that have their own thoughts and feelings and preferences when it comes to content that they watch online. Are you surprised by this? You were never going to receive just one answer or one overwhelming answer from the majority of your viewers. To me, it just sounds like you have a mishmash of viewers. Shout out mishmash, obviously. People that come to your streams expecting different things out of you. And that's kind of the community that you cultivate when you are a variety streamer. A lot of people 
people might show up for a lot of different reasons. Aren't you the person who's constantly telling us that some people show up for some video games and other people show up for other video games? I mean, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people watch you for a variety of reasons. Like some people like to watch you rage. Some people like to see you actually be good at a game that never happens. Some people like to see you beg. So of course you were going to get a bunch of different answers on how you should be playing Tekken 8 because your audience isn't focused. You don't do anything well. You don't actually focus on anything. There's no content that you make that people can come back to time and time again and is just quality every single time. You don't have a niche. You don't have a subject that you specialize in. That's why I keep saying if you're going to be variety style, you have to have a personality that people want to engage with, that people find genuinely entertaining. That way you don't have to rely on the games because the games are always going to be different. They're always going to be changing. One person outright said the following. I'm not kidding. I'm paraphrasing, but this is outright what they said. The reason that people come and watch you play fighting games is because they want to see you get angry and toxic. They find it entertaining. That's what got you noticed for Street Fighter 4 a million years ago. That's why the FGC resented you so badly because they couldn't get the views you were getting on the gameplay that they were putting out and they thought, oh, our gameplay is way better than his, so why is he popular? People didn't understand that you were funny. They didn't like that, right? People like you when you're at your worst because it's funny to see you flip out with rage. So if you do that kind of stuff all the time, more people will show up and watch it. Like, yeah, but every time I do it, people complain that I'm toxic and I'm a jerk and, you know. That commenter is absolutely right. There are some people in DSP's audience and probably some people in my audience who like to see DSP rage and be filled with salt when he plays fighting games and like that he gets toxic because it is entertaining. But if that's something you're going to do, again, you have to just know that there's going to be repercussions for this. People are going to shit talk you online. People are going to say and call out that you're being toxic. Also with that, if you're going to cater and be a little more toxic and give the people what they want, the salt and the rage, you have to understand that those same people are probably going to be a little more toxic in your chat. So you're going to have to lighten up with your iron fist that you have around the chat. It's like, I don't, here's the thing <clears throat> for me, there's got to be a balance. When I make content, there has to be a balance and the balance has to be the following. I am enjoying what I'm doing and want to keep doing it. Okay, you enjoy what I'm doing and want me to keep doing it. And of course, the other thing is people actually show up to watch the content, engage with it and support it. Those are the three factors. I like what I'm doing, you like what I'm doing, and it can be supported so I can make money and have a business out of it, okay? Those are the three key factors to success here with my gameplay and business. Other people may be different, but that's the keys to success for me. All right. Of course, the three pillars of DSP's content is I like it, you like it, I get money. That's it. I've never heard another streamer break down their business like that. It just seems disrespectful. But it's really nothing new in the Snortex. Just another day. Now, very much, there is some of the, the time when that's not always true. Sometimes I'll be playing a game I hate, but you guys outright love watching me play it, and I will tough my way through it regardless, even if I don't like it. I mean, perfect example of that, Wolong fallen bullshit last year whatever it was called i did not like that game i felt that game was a bad knockoff of a bunch of others bad execution bad controls bad graphics everything was fucked up about it i didn't enjoy it but i toughed through it because you guys wanted to see it so there you go for those of you that didn't watch the wolong playthrough and aren't quite sure which one that is but you watched one of my streams recently that's the one where the frame rate went do 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 instead of dee 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 because it was constantly chopping up and and lagging i'm glad that he toughed through that game just so that i could make that reference that's big ups now there's other cases where i like a game but you guys don't like it that much but because i'm enjoying it so much i'll still go through with it I call these kind of like pet projects or kind of the love letter games. Like if I'm playing Chrono Trigger, I realize that my mainstream audience doesn't love that. But I want to play it because it's a game that's near and dear to my heart from my childhood. I want to make that playthrough so those who do care about me as a person can eventually watch it and see how much it meant to me and why. Right? It'll never go popular. It'll never get giant views. But at least it's cool that I got a playthrough out of that last year. You know what I'm saying? 
And I know I said earlier that he shouldn't be playing games that he doesn't enjoy on stream because it makes for bad content, but what he also shouldn't be doing is be playing games that he enjoys that his audience doesn't like. Because those games should just be played off stream if that's the case. Again, the goal is to be entertaining on stream, it's to entertain the audience. If they don't like the game, you shouldn't be playing it for them, you should be playing it by yourself in your spare time. Again, unless you were capable of making it entertaining regardless of what the game is, which we've covered about a hundred times by now DSP is not capable of doing. I really don't know why he doesn't understand that the only thing that he has to do for his job, for his business, is be entertaining and do things that people want to see. So, sometimes you can make those exceptions, but sometimes you have to make that exception to put out content that's either meaningful to you or your audience or both, and it goes hand in hand that, you know, if you make that kind of content that's not always agreed upon on both sides, you gotta balance it with stuff that people agree upon. So that way I can keep operating a successful business, right? So, my question is again, what to do with Tekken? Because people seem to be all over the place with this. Some people wanna see me get better at the game. They say, all right, you know what? Pick three, four characters, focus on them, rotate between, get better, learn balance changes to the game. There was just a balance patch last night. They rebalanced Tekken, uh, uh, Tekken 8. They made it so that June isn't as overpowered in the corner as she used to be. They made it so that she can't do the palm strike in a combo in the corner, which is good because it was so ridiculous how much she could do to you in the corner. They made it so Devil Jin's uh, kicks aren't as good because they used to have insane range across the screen leading to a combo from almost anywhere, and they made it so now it's not as good. They made it so a lot of moves can be blocked and punished, which couldn't be before. Dragunov. I was saying, Dragunov seems way too strong because he's got these giant sweeping launchers that all then immediately lead to combos and are safe. So I guess they nerfed Dragunov and they made it so he can't just keep doing that, that you can punish a lot of those, right? Um, <clears throat> so I got to learn these changes, right? I do. I, this patch came out. I have to learn these changes if I want to get better at the game. I have to know now what's happened to these characters so I can take advantage of that knowledge, right? Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I'm having a good time with the game. I'm liking getting better. I had a real a good amount of fun yesterday or two days ago playing with Paul. That was fun because I was like, wow, I didn't use him since launch. A week and a half later, I jump in and I'm actually doing really good. I got combos. I'm learning strategies. I'm dominating in a lot of these matches, you know. And the way I see it, if I keep playing at a higher level, I will enjoy it to some extent. Now, will I hit the wall like I did with Street Fighter Six? I might. I might get to a point where this is the meta, and in order to get better, the only way I'm going to get better is to easily either either find the optimal way to play the game online, which I don't think anyone even knows in Tekken right now. Like, a lot of people bought the game on PC and immediately found out the PC version isn't better. Oh my god, somehow I knew that we were going to get to this point in Tekken 8 as well. We were going to start comparing the ports of the game and deciding which one has the advantage according to DSP. It was really inevitable after all of that shit with Street Fighter 6 in the PC port and his constant Theo theories. Shout out Theo, obviously. Like with Street Fighter 6, the PC version is better. Everyone found ways to tweak it so they have better input lag and shit. People who bought Tekken on PC are like, oh, so really it wasn't better. It's not. It's supposedly like an equal playing field right now, which is actually a good thing for the launch of a game like this. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, like right now, it's a great time to play the game hardcore and get better at it. But I very well could hit the wall like I did at Street Fighter Six and be like, well, the only way I'm going to get better now is to play this five hours a day. I'm not playing Tekken 8 five hours a day. That's never going to happen, you know? But it's inevitable, DSP. Your skill level will plateau at some point. And you will either have to commit to playing consistently and actively trying to be better every single time you play or just give up. I don't know why you're sitting here and acting as though that it's only a possibility. It's inevitable. Everybody's skill plateaus at some point and they have to commit to being better. But because you're not willing to do it gradually, you're not willing to do it in small increments consistently, you should just give up. At most, I'm playing it, what, twice a week? So... You, you get to that point. Now, if I play it casually, that's cool, but understand I'm just not gonna get better at it. I'll, I'll mess around and learn basic strategies with a few characters, but I'm probably never gonna get to the point where I'm actually playing the game at any kind of a high level. It's just me messing around and always playing low level people, you know, which I'm okay with, but probably it'll get boring within a few weeks and I'll drop it in a month or so, right? Like that's how, that's what's destined to happen if you play a game like that. <clears throat> 
So we need a decision. And right now, I'm kind of like on the fence about it. I really don't know what to do. So what I think I'm going to do for Friday Night Fights this week, I want to go back to King. I haven't used him now in a bit. And I'm going to study. I'm going to look at some matchup knowledge. I'm going to look at people doing videos about like what I need to know what to do to punish with King. When someone does an unsafe move, how do I punish it after the fact? And does he have any good high-low mix-ups? I think he does, but I'm not aware of it. Like, I need to figure this stuff out. Once I figure that stuff out, because I know basic juggles, I know his command, some of his good command throws, but I need to implement better strategy with King. Okay? So I think I want to focus on that for at least Friday. For Friday Night Fights, it'll be like King on Friday Night Fights and see how it goes. But outside of that, <clears throat> I'm actually not sure what I want to do next in the game. Do I want to stick with Paul, King, June? Do I want to take on a new character? I have to think about it. And again, I want your feedback on this. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see. All right, we'll see. And please continue to give me feedback because I need it. But yeah, I am kind of at a part where I need to make a, a, an important decision. And I'm not sure what the right choice is. I feel like no matter what choice I make, some people won't be happy, right? absolutely right dsp you can't please everybody that's just the way of the world god it's always about feedback with this guy i need your feedback please make this decision for me i'm incapable of making any decision for my business that i make a living off of he couldn't get any lazier if he tried but that's it for this video of course another big ups to snort hogan for the clip in this one as always i appreciate it brother shout out everybody who watched the video especially if you made it this far and a special big ups to all of my members i love all of you so much thank you hopefully i'll catch all of you guys in the next video but until then make sure that you check out other detractor channels and dive deeper into that snortex ah!